Hello everybody, Demo, Demo, Demo's Movies here, here, and I'll also be reviewing True Grit. Starring, of course, John Wayne as Rooster Cogburn, Kim Darby as Matty Ross, Robert Duvall as Ned Pepper, and, of course, Glenn Campbell as, as LaBeef. Which, which of course was the movie that the Duke only earned his only Oscar for in his stored career. And, and, and note this movie, will, this review will also count for the 2010 remake, remake, because, which starred, which is directed by the Coen Brothers, starred Bridge, Jeff Bridges as, as Cogburn, Matt Damon as LaBeef, Josh Brolin as Tom Chaney, Barry Pepper as Ned Pe as Ned Pepper, and Haley Steinfeld as Matty Ross. Yeah. In comparisons, I'm gonna say both are on par, though the 2010 remake was more to the book, was more to the book given how it's ending, how it ending for those who've read the Charles Portis novel. Where, uh, but I do give some props to the Wayne version for for bring, making it worthy of a sequel. You know the changes it made, which I, which. As a critic, I do have a love-hate relationship for when they take out, when they change up, change up certain components in, in adaptations. But at least watered down, watered down action was not one of them. And and I think the Wayne version of True Grit versus versely. First leaves us hell I had a shit ton for for a G rated movie. Funny how things would get away of a give back then. Back in them days. Like I hmm. But though I do give give in the remake give John I do give Josh Brolin his epic performance of for one better a better Tom Chaney than the dude in the Wayne ver version. I'm gonna say he didn't really get get much recognition after that movie, where of course Robert Duvall went of course to be a lead be be an equal le cinematic legend and. And I gotta say, Glenn Campbell was a better LaBeef than, than Matt Damon. Because Matt Damon trying to be a Texan is just out there. That's about all, my only flaw, only flaw for Ford versus Ferrari was his cringe. He was trying to be a, trying to cover up that Boston accent, trying to be, trying to play Carol Shelby. And, and, and damn. And equal measure. In the terms of Matty Ross, Kim Darby, and A. Steinfeld, both knocked out of the park for their age. Though, I gotta say, age accuracy for it was Haley, goes to Haley. Haley in that Wednesday Adams get up, she, they had her, they, they had her dressed in, as for the movie. I mean. That's all I can think. One I can think of what the Steinfeld ver of Haley Steinfeld's version of True of Mary Ross's how she was more like a a Western version of of Wednesday Adams. But but still as headstrong as cocky as her book counterpart in the in the original. Along with, 
with the equal measure between between Bridges and Wayne, where at least one scene, scene didn't have like a encounter of of Mary Ross trying to do like one trying to pick her trying to first talk to him in the out, outhouse of a of the nearest saloon is Fort Smith. Which of course was a notorious town in the in the in the Western days. As Judge Parker, who was frequently mentioned in the in both the original remake and the sequel. And even more so with I like the Wayne version had like a old funny scene with it at Chain Lee's place with with him and Stuart and Christ just by like the Wild West version of Garfield. Minus the talking and the lasagna obsession. But just fat and orange, that's all only comparisons I could say. Who of course was named after a actual Confederate general. And of course Wayne being a being a wrote being a Quantrill veteran, but but at least there was one jab in the, between Labeef and Wayne, and I had a had him go talking about how how Kirby Smith was more more respectable because he was an actual soldier, not an out, not like what Coburn being a reform, reformed outlaw. Ride with Jesse James. And of course you got got an old line with how long you boys been mounted on sheep? And then the old scene with Moon and Quincy and their hideout and oh which I gotta say the better take on the shootout goes to goes to what goes to the Wayne version. Even some lines like Like where man says, "How come you only load five rounds?" And he goes, "So I don't blow my own foot off." And then the whole courtroom scene, and the quote, bit quotable lines of that, like, "A gun that's unloaded and cocked ain't good for nothing." And backwards, I always go backwards when I'm backing away. And damn, I'd uh, say the portrayals of Moon and Quincy. Kind of go go better towards Jeremy Slayton and Dennis Hopper, oh, man, which is saying something for Dennis Hopper, because he was like the Sean Bean of the fifties and sixties when it came to westerns. You know, kind of like almost like most movies he was in. You can say. If, you, you always didn't know his character was going to die. And of course you got. Got the old. Forest shoot out in. In what was. Back then was called the Indian Nation which was. Which is now Oklahoma. And you had the old showdown. Which I'm gonna say, say the portrayals of Ned Pepper are tied, which is kind of fitting. Yeah, you actually that they actually casted Barry Pepper to play Ned Pepper, which old Barry's on very much underrated from his portrayal as of Dale Senior in in Free, which I got a review of that if y'all if you're interested. And his portrayal of Bobby Kennedy Sr. in in the Kennedy miniseries. And I mean, because talking about <clears throat> you gotta say, when it talks about range, old Barry knocks it out of the park. Though Robert is an acting legend and had equal amount of range. Range in his take. 
in old epic shootouts, which, especially with that line in, in both versions, which says, had in the encounter of Mary Ross going, Oh, by God, girl, that's a Colts Dragoon, and you're no bigger than a corn knob, and, you know, because she used her, 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 using the, using the gun that was her father's in, which, of course, the John Wayne version, of course, actually showed the scene. The movie just, the other one just started off, started off with her, her getting off the truck, with Maddie getting off the train, and Yarnell getting off the train, to Fort Smith, but, but in the ending wise, it had like one where she's showing off a cemetery, the family cemetery, and wanting, and telling Rooster that he, he wants her to be buried, he want, she wants him to be buried in that, on that when it's his time, which in the novel, and the remake, she eventually does after after he retires from marshalling and becomes a goes to re reunites with his old Confederate buddies Frank James and Cole Younger, you know, trying to start their own Wild West show back in after that, you know, after Cole Younger got out of prison for. For Northfield, but overall, both versions a definite five out of five masterpieces. Worthy enough for the Duke to earn his Oscar, and 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 I'm just like, how the hell did fucking Bridge gets Bridges get snubbed that year? Because he was just as worthy and more book accurate, which is saying a lot. Because Adam, a lot of people say that the book is always better than the movie, but the 2010 version of True Get equal met. It's tied. It's a tie. Overall, five out of five masterpiece. All right, y'all, that'll do it for this week. This week, uh, and or try not. to be more better at weekly because I was I had a unexplained events is why I hadn't been able to post in a while. But all right, overall, I hope y'all like, subscribe, and enjoy, and I'll keep dishing them out.